The Gazelles kept up their aggressive attacking style in the second period, scoring several points as a result of fouls committed by their opponents. By a final score of 74 to 53 points, Uganda triumphed. Hopa Kelo and Brenda Ekon both scored 14 points in this victory, while neutralized Ugandan player Jonan Otto scored 13 points, as the other players all scored single digit points. Maria Najuma made the most rebounds at 18. We, we stayed composed, we reduced on the turnovers and uh, the fight. It's, it's the heart. You give it to all, each game is like a final. We are excited because um, it's, it's, Sudan is also a good team, so we are happy we uh, won and uh, hopefully we qualify. Very important is that uh, when you have a game plan and prepare and you stick to it, it's, uh, it will always work. I think we, we did that today and uh, yesterday. We tried our level best to limit the, the two teams we played against and, and it worked. Uh, usually in tournaments like this, you always want to get better as the tournament goes. And I think that's what has happened. We obviously knew that yesterday was uh, you know, do or die. Actually, yesterday and today was do or die. So it was very important to go yesterday's win against a very good team. And I think that gave us confidence going into you know, today's game because we knew that uh, after Egypt, we had a better chance against the other team. So I'm glad we're able to get this win and let's wait and see where, where we fall and what that means for us. The win gives Uganda an advantage as they await the result of today's fixture to see who will make it to the final. Before the Ugandan game, Kenya defeated Rwanda 69-58. In today's fixture, Egypt has defeated Rwanda in the first game played at 5 p.m as Kenya is taking on South Sudan, currently at the Indo Arena. Tomorrow, Saturday, February 18th, 2023, Uganda will be back in action against Rwanda in hopes of reaching the final game that will be played on Sunday, still at the Lugogo Indoor Stadium. Grace Joyce Kemigisa, UBC News.